what's going on everybody it is february 23rd friday and we have a monster slate uh 11 games some of them look okay um but just gonna be a ton of options ton of lineup variability barring any news uh last night didn't go very well um for some reason they haven't finalized contests yet but right now let's see any changes Oh, now I'm just not even logged in. Okay, so, you know, down a little bit, um, depending on your definition of a little bit, but, you know, shit happens. Uh, I didn't expect Trey Burke to be the point guard that I wanted from the Knicks. Um, was hoping for a little bit more out of Moutier. Beasley was terrible. Um, so that didn't exactly help. But... Just to show you guys, best lineup. It's here, 373. Um, which is kind of crazy, you know, considering it had Mark and in and, uh, and Damari Carroll. I liked Damari Carroll a lot last night, so that one kind of bummed me out. Mark and in just happened to be in this lineup. Would have expected more out of Rivers, too, especially in a 127 point output for uh, the Clippers. So yeah, down yesterday, but taking uh, another stab at it tonight. Putting We're going to do another max entry um, into the shop. So that's the plan for tonight. Uh, I don't have any cleaning the glass stats right now. Um, can't get to it. So just kind of going to go with the flow for this one. Um, so let's start off first game. Uh, Pistons hosting the Celtics. Uh, Pistons 101.75 implied total is 21st. Uh, this is not a game to focus on from a uh, fantasy standpoint, at least from the Pistons side. So I think I actually refreshed this. I did. Look at me doing things before we start. Uh, Drummond up first, 9,700 on FanDuel. 9,300 on DK. Um, man, he needs 50, basically. Against Boston, just so good defensively. I, I'm, he's just a tier four for me. That's, that's a tough spot. I can't imagine he'll be terribly highly owned. I don't know. Reggie Bullock, no interest. Uh, Blake, do I need to get off the Blake train? 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Well, I'm off of the Blake train on DK, that's for sure. 8,400. He needs 42. He's just been so steady. No monster games. I can't expect it to be tonight. Don't like that matchup, so Blake's going to be a four. And I'm going to say that's just on FanDuel. I, I don't think I would take him at 8,600 on DK. Uh, not terribly interested in Stanley Johnson. Only other guy I would look at would be Ish. Hmm. Put up 45 in the Valentine's Day game. Comfortable saying Ish is a four as well. There's just not a lot to like. Very little value. Uh, very little upside. I need to refresh something. Something looked wrong. At least to me. Coffee break. I felt good to be back last night. Felt like I hadn't played in forever. So weird. I don't like this week off. That's terrible. Uh oh. This doesn't seem good, right? Excel not responding. Nothing really on the screen. Remind me not to uh, click any buttons in my sheet. So yeah, down you know 230 on 600 yesterday. Not the best. Um, ultimately had a ton of core. Curry, Beasley, Moutier, Embiid. Um, who am I missing? Oh, we're back. Doesn't matter. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's, I think, everything that I could possibly want in this particular game. So now let's go to the Boston side. Boston 103.25 implied total is 17 uh, point and a half favorites in Detroit. Only game out of all of these actually that has a, a Josh's made up line is Pacers Hawks and everybody knows Pacers by a bundle in that one so shouldn't change too much. Let's look at the Celtics now. See they they're so rarely in a spot where I think that they're interesting. Um, Kyrie at 7,900 is at least mildly interesting. Needs 40. He had a 46 and a 45 right before the break. I'd say Kyrie's a 3. It's probably a 4 on DK, though. Is this Is this real life? Gonna have to save it and close it and open it again, which is, you know, just what everybody wants in the middle of this. It's not like I'm gonna edit the video. So, let's save this. There's just too many calculations going on. I need to blow this sheet up and start it from scratch. Take out all the stuff that I don't look at any longer. Any updates from cleaning glass? Nope, still broke. I hope everybody comes here for like the high level editing that I do. And by editing, I mean immediately uploading this file. Yeah, I'm going to say he's a FanDuel 3 and a DK 4. Da ah, backwards. Let's see, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, 5,400, 5,200, 5,500, 5,200. I just, I can never figure out how I think these guys are going to go. This doesn't really feel like one of those situations where I'm, I have a clear look at them. Um, to me, they're just fours. Horford. How has Horford been against the Pistons in his career? I felt like they played recently, but they didn't. Okay, so we went for 43 earlier, but never anything too crazy. He needs 35. Just hasn't really been there. Not really the spot. Um, I'll say that he's also a four. Just it's not a good matchup. Marcus Smart expected to be back. Uh, he's been out for a hell of a long time now, uh, but expectation is we should see him tonight. So that uh, nerfs any part of Terry Rozier. Marcus Smart at five thousand forty eight hundred on DK. You'd be looking twenty five. Um, I, like I don't mind having a little bit of him, but he's Marcus Smart. Uh, he's just a four again. You don't really want this game. Celtics are hard to pin down, and it's just a slow slog of a game. Pacers, though. 111 implied total is fifth. They're hosting the Hawks. I've got them as nine-point favorites at home. Uh, should be in and around there, but uh, the main takeaway is just that the Hawks aren't very good, and this is a great matchup. There it is. Great matchup for, uh, for the Pacers. I assume they're pretty high in my, yeah. In my opinion, the number two matchup on the entire slate. Ola Depot, 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. So you're looking 50. Right before the break, he had a 60 and a 73. That's um, about as good of a spot as he's going to find. So... I don't love that price. It's uh, a little bit prohibitive in my opinion. Where's he at? But I do tend to um, underrate 
Oladipo, so I'm going to say he's a three. Thad Young, man, none of these prices are very good. Thad Young, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Looking 32. Three straight games in the 30s right before the break. I'm, I'm fine with Thad. Corey Joseph is a four because he's Corey Joseph. Miles Turner, that's the interesting one. 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. So he needs 35. Uh, two games right around there before the break. He had uh, a 44 and a 43 earlier in that stretch as well. This is a great game for Miles Turner. He is also a three. I'd like to have some decent exposure to him. Um, he's a three on Fandle. He's a four on DK. Uh, that's not the best DraftKings price. Still nothing crazy from a value perspective. I didn't really see much either, so it might be a real balanced set of exposures so far tonight. No interest in Boyan, no interest in Sabonis. Yeah, let's go to Atlanta. Hawks, um, I have them at 102, which would be 20th. Um, assuming they're running out everybody they have right now, but they're going to be... Uh, you would think aggressive in the tanking. So we'll look at Schroeder first. Schroeder is 7,000 on both sites. That's actually not bad. Um, can I do anything on on here? Can I? No, I can't, can I? OK, never mind. Not a ton to like here. You would think that a team like the Hawks, who's um, you know probably going to do a little tanking, they would have some value pop up, but they don't really have much of anything. Um, I'd say Schroeder. I actually like him tonight. Uh, it's probably a three on FanDuel, four on DK. DK's pricing looks really bad. I mean, granted, it's... This is the fourth team I'm looking at, but not a lot standing out. Dwayne Dedmond, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. So you're looking 28. Um, there's some upside there. Same sort of thing, three on FanDuel, four on DK. He, these prices are terrible on DraftKings. Baysmore, I just don't have any interest in. Prince, I don't have any interest in. Ilya Sova's probably just a four. And John Collins is probably a four. If we can see that John Collins is actually going to get minutes, he's a guy, like I like him in GPPs because he can go off on a per minute basis, but 5,500 on both sites just feels like a force. Again, eleven games. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to get too crazy. Let's go to the Wiz. Wizards one hundred and seven implied total is eleventh. They are three and a half point favorites at home, uh, hosting the Hornets. Hornets on the away side of a back to back, so something to keep in mind. Let's look at the Wiz. Sadoransky going ham last night was interesting. I didn't see that one coming. Bradley Beal, 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. You're looking 45. He was a little quiet last night. Um, I like the idea of him being a little less quiet tonight. I'm going to say that he's a three. I just kind of like him in this scenario. Otto Porter, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. I wanted more out of him last night. I thought he had a really good matchup. Porter's probably a four. 
Ubre, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. So you're looking 25 out of Ubre. Had a big night last night. Um, I actually like that. I can see him getting back up to, you know, the 27, 28 range. Which would be satisfying, I guess. Sadoransky, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. I can't see it. He needs 32. <laughs> 39, 38, 41 in his last three. He had a 30 and a 36. How much has that moved his... Uh... Yeah, he's been decent on a per-minute basis. I think that... Um... They're probably being a little too aggressive on him. Although I'd like to see... Do I have NBA Wowie open? I've been trying to compare how many shots people take um, when guys are off the floor compared to what I have them projected for. Just to make sure that like I'm giving them the right sort of amount of offense. So if I take a look at Sadoransky... I know this is going to be weird. So Porter shows up twice on NBA Wowie for some reason. Ubre's wrong. Yeah, I have Sadoransky. Sadoransky averages 7.8 field goal attempts uh, with Wall off the floor. And that's exactly what I have him projected at. So, yeah, still not having a ton of interest in Sadoransky. I'm going to assume that he is just still the guy that I don't think is very good. Uh, Markeith Morris, let's see, he got 28 minutes last night, got 28 fantasy points, uh, gotta say that he's a 4, I guess. Marakef, <laughs> there's the first one of the day, I think. Let's go to Charlotte, that's just not a very interesting game either. Um, Hornets, on the away side of a back-to-back -back. Uh, three and a half point underdogs in Washington, 16th highest implied total. You know, near the bottom in terms of matchup. Doesn't seem like a place that I would want to focus. Shouldn't have any like weird injury news that opens anything up. So we're looking at Kemba, 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. I, I can't, I can't see wanting to be there. He's a four. Um, 8,700 is just a lot of freight. Like, he's good, you know, for four or three straight 40 point games. I'd like, I'd be fine with Kemba in cash, um, but there's not a ton of upside in an $8,700 price tag. Nick Batum is 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Looking 30, been there in his last two. Hmm. I wish that I could look up anything on cleaning the glass. Can't do it. Okay. Come on, Ben, get it together. Yeah, Batum's probably just a four as well. I think most of this game is. Dwight, 8,600 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. What was his price last night? Yeah, they dropped him 400 bucks. I mean, I don't have any reason to be nervous about Dwight against Washington. Um, I actually like it a little bit. If he can get some offensive rebounds, you know, not that he's a great free throw shooter, but Washington will put him on the line. Uh, I think Dwight is the best thing I've seen in this game for sure. I'd say he's a three. You know, you can't go wild over it, but I don't mind that $8,600 price tag at all. That's 43 for value on FanDuel. He hit 45 in his last one. You know, he could easily have a 60-point game. So I think there's a lot of upside in that price. Marvin Williams, you know, probably just a four. Michael Key Gilchrist, probably just a four. 
I can see having like a stack or two of the Hornets, but again, on the away side of a back-to-back, -back, that's my least favorite portion of it all. I guess Frank the Tank is a four on FanDuel. What did he finish with last night? 18. Go to the Raptors. Raptors hosting the Bucks. Uh, Raptors 111.25 implied total is fourth. Um, they are seven and a half point favorites at home. Should be a really good game. I might actually want to watch that. I think both teams should be fully healthy. I'm pretty sure Henson's back. Be something to check out. All right. Ugh, this is going to bother me. Let's so see. This is what I need cleaning the glass for. I want to know uh, if this is a DeRozan game or a Lowry game. It strikes me more as a Lowry game, but DeRozan could get. To oh, no. This is, it is a Lowry game. I know exactly what game this is. Ah, where is it? Let's bring it up. It's this. It's the, uh, it's the, I'm afraid DeRozan, here's 52 legitimate points. <laughs> okay. Oh, the return. The return game. Where's Lowry? What was his price at that point? 77 and 75. Okay. So, Damar, I know people are going to lose their minds for this one. 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. When he went ham, 8,100, and then 9,300 in, in his other game against them. Um, so, I'm going to say he's a three. I'm going to say Kyle's a three. I think I prefer Kyle, but we all know where that went the first time. DeRozan had, he had like 15 in the first five minutes of that game or something stupid, and all of a sudden it was like, oh cool, great fade, I have zero of him. <laughs> uh, no interest in Ibaka, no real interest in Jonas. Um, I picture, well... Yeah, uh, no real interest there. It's just a four. Van Vliet is tricky. 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Grades out really well. I could see a scenario where he's an interesting GPP play. That's probably it for Toronto. Go to Milwaukee. Bucks, seven and a half point underdogs in Toronto. They have the 15th highest implied total, 103.75. Um, Toronto, very difficult matchup. Milwaukee near the bottom, third from the bottom in terms of uh, matchup rating for me. So we've got Giannis, 10-8 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. How did he do in those two? I want to say he was a ghost. Yeah, two shit games. No reason to think it's going to be different this time. Four. Chris Middleton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Um, we're looking 38. Let's think about this here. How did he do in those Toronto games? I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Toronto. Ooh, coming back. Yeah, nothing special. I don't see it as anything special. It's also for Bledsoe. 7,900 on FanDuel. 6,900 on DK. That's an interesting DK price. He's looking for 40. A uh, couple 40, three straight 40 point games just before the All Star break, plus a 55. Um, I'll say Bledsoe's a three. It's 
probably all I want here. Um, until we know we're going to get more minutes out of Jabari, I don't think this is the spot. No interest in Snell or Henson. Let's get to a game that actually matters. Houston Rockets hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, should come as no surprise. Houston with the number one implied total, 117.25. They are eight and a half point favorites at home against the Wolves. Um, should have a ton of this game. James Harden's 11-4 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK. That's a fucking piss poor price there. Uh, so you're looking for 55 to 60. You would think he's going to get a steady diet of, uh, of Jimmy Butler. I'm going to say Harden's a three. Chris Paul, 8,900 on FanDuel, 9,100 on DK. I think I like Chris Paul a lot here. Needs 45. Yeah, I think I prefer Paul to Harden. Capella, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Does he, like, notoriously roast them or something? Yeah, I thought they just played, and I'm pretty sure he does. But now he had. What did Harden do? He did. He put up 62. What did Paul put up? 37. I'm going to say Capella is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Just play on DK or play on FanDuel tonight. This DK pricing is depressing. Eric Gordon, 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Needs 22. Yeah, it's hard to get behind that. Uh, I'm just going to say he's a 4. There's no I in Eric. Should be a <clears throat> should be a joke or something. Oh, Trevor Reza expected to be back, so that pretty much nerfs all of Ryan Anderson, Mba Mute, and PJ Tucker right now. Or and Joe Johnson. And uh, I don't want to explore Trevor Reza coming back after a couple weeks off. So let's check the Wolves. Wolves 108.75 implied total is eighth. Um, big underdogs in Houston. This is a middle-of-the-pack game, actually. Both teams are decent defensively. I know that seems weird to think about, but on a per-possession basis, that's the case. So let's just grab these top five now, since we know we're going to have some sort of combo of them. Jimmy Butler, 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. He's 46. Um, yeah, had a bit of a stinker there. Hmm. I'll say Butler's a three. Wiggins at 6,000 is pretty much right where I like his price. I'm going to say that he's a three as well. Uh, Jeff Teague, 6,700. Feels high. Needs 33. He's playing decent before the break. Very much a GPP guy. Alternating games of 19, 42, 17, 35, 42. Alright, getting a work email. Um, yeah, Teague looks good. Three. Um, and that's a GPP three for me. He's just... It's hard to trust him in cash. Uh, Taj, on the other hand, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, you're looking like 26, 27, somewhere in that area. 
At 44 right before the break. Not the best game against Houston, though. Um, only put up 18. Yeah, I just... I'm, I'm indifferent against most of this. Towns. Not, there's no... There is no value in the first half of these games that I've looked at. Towns is 9,700 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. I mean, you need 50 out of him. Put up 65. Um... Yeah, I, I just like combos of Minnesota here. If I had to rank them, I would go Towns. For me, it's Towns, Teague, Butler, Wiggins, Gibson. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, going to change all day. <laughs> so. Memphis hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Memphis, five-point underdogs at home. They have the 19th highest implied total. I wish that I liked anything that happened for the Grizzlies. But they're bad. They're bad at basketball. Let's start on uh, Dylan Brooks, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. I mean, it's a good price. He needs 23. Um, he's not a guy that just stacks up fantasy points. But I'm going to say that he's actually a three. It's Cleveland. I know that it's a different Cleveland team. Can't really take their defensive stats to heart. But they're still the same sort of not good defense. I'm pretty confident in that. Marc Gasol is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. It's 40. I actually like the idea of Gasol here tonight, too. That's not a horrible price. And, you know, Cleveland doesn't exactly match up to Biggs well one way or the other. Um, if they're still, if Memphis is still going to play Gasol his full allotment, um, he feels like a relatively safe play. Keep an eye on his minutes and stuff, though. Andrew Harrison, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. Finally, DK getting a piece of value. Um, Chalmers is questionable. Harrison should get a full allotment of minutes. Uh, put up 30, you know, he said games of 35, 40, 35 again. Needs 27 for value on FanDuel. Uh, I'm going to say that Harrison is a three, or a four on FanDuel, rather. Because I don't, I don't love him at that price. But he's for sure a three on DK. Um, 4300 is a, just a real nice price for him. You know, if he hits 7x, that's basically 30. He's got three of those games recently. Uh, I would I would definitely like some Andrew Harrison in a DraftKings GPP. Tyreek is 7900 on both sites. Um, that's not super appealing. He's just a four. And Jamichael Green, same for me, just a four. Not having uh, the cleaning the glass data is a pretty big pain in the ass today. Go to the Cavs. Cavs on the away side of a back-to-back, -back, although at least they get the Grizzlies. 108 implied total is 10th. And Cleveland is in the middle of the pack for a matchup. Uh, Memphis actually with a much better matchup in theory. LeBron, 11-3 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DraftKings. He's, you know, I think it's perfectly safe. I don't really care for him in a GPP scenario. Um, so I'm going to say that he's just a four. Memphis is a bit of a slog, so there are better options out there, I think. Or at least there should be. No real interest in JR. Uh, Tristan Thompson. 3,900 on FanDuel. 4,200 on DK. Put up 26 last night. Uh, that's a pretty solid game for somebody at 4,000. Um, I'm also going to say that he's just a 4. You know what? He's probably a 3 on FanDuel. And a 4 on DK. 
if we don't get news, I'm really nervous there's going to be anything out there that is good. We'll probably get news just in, like, the Lakers game or something at 10.30 at night. Um, not a ton of interest in George Hill. Rodney Hood is 4,700 on both sites. Don't really have much interest there. I don't think I would want any part of the rest of this game. So we'll go to the Pels now. The Pelicans are hosting the Heat. 108.5 implied total is ninth. Uh, they're two and a half point favorites at home. Uh, Heat are a great defensive team. So again, it makes it a little scary to focus here. But Anthony Davis is 11-7. He's 11-1 on DK. Um, that's a scary price point. He's had some monster games right before the break. Um, obviously now with Cousins out and with Miritich in the fold. Um, I think that Anthony Davis is a really tricky matchup, though, for the Heat. Uh, because it's not like Kelly Olynyk can guard him. Um, I don't think Bam would be ready to guard him. And, I mean... If you want to say that you think that Whiteside can hang with him, then you I can only assume that you would have to lean towards liking Drew Holiday in that scenario because that, in theory, should be pulling Whiteside away from the basket. That's what runs through my head. I, you know, whether or not that's true is up for debate. But have they played at all this year? Just in December... It's a different game. You can't really use it as a reference point. I like Anthony Davis a lot tonight. Um, of all the studs we've seen so far, oddly enough, even though that I don't like this matchup um, and that the Pels are you know near the bottom, I think that the way it's set up and the way that Anthony Davis plays um, fits him pretty well here. Drew Holiday is 8500 on FanDuel and 7600 on DK. That's a really bad price for him. Uh, he needs 42. He's been there. That, I mean, I, I get why it's there. But they're kind of zapping a lot of the value out of him. In that matchup, I think that he's just a 4. Miritich at 7,500. Uh, 6,600 on DK. So, let's see how many shots people are taking there. This would be another one where I'd be interested in it. So, let's look at the Pelicans... Let's just make sure that Cousins is off. Oh yeah, Dante Cunningham. Let's take Dante Cunningham off too, since not that he's much of a shooter, but certainly not on the team. I want to see if how I'm projecting Miritich and if I'm overrating him. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. Miritich. Not really. I could afford to give probably Eton Moore, Rondo, and Darius Miller a little bump, but everybody else is probably fine. Miritich needs 38. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to like that. And 6,600 on DK looks great. I'll say that that's a three. Um, can't imagine wanting any other parts of this, though. God, I'm blowing up today. All right, let's go to Miami. Heat. 106 implied total is 13th. Uh, middle of the pack matchup. And just hope for decent pricing. Ooh. I guess they're... Are they really assuming that Wade just... fucks over Josh Richardson that bad? I guess. Three shit games out of Richardson. Richardson down to 5,500. Look how far down his price has gone. Yeah, he was 7,000 that first game with Wade. And mid-sixes for... A long stretch now down to 5,500. 
Hmm. Okay. I'm willing to entertain Josh Richardson as a three on FanDuel. He doesn't have the best price. He's a little bit more expensive on uh, DraftKings, but I don't know if that's just totally an overreaction to Wade being there and, and dominating the ball. But there is upside in that 5,500 number. What have the shots looked like since Wade's been back? Um, so that would be what, like the last four games? When did Wade come back? The ninth. Okay. Not that we should be going based on, you know, fucking three games worth of basketball, but I'd like to know how bad that has negatively impacted Richardson, or if he's just played bad. So he's, yeah, I've got him taking an extra shot, which is interesting. James Johnson has been the, has been shooting a bit more since Wade has been back. All right, uh, yeah, I, I think Josh Richardson's sneaky. That's a pretty big price drop for non-performance related reasons. I mean, granted, his last three performances have sucked and he only played 23 minutes right before the break, but I don't see that continuing. I've got him in for 34 minutes. Dragic, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Needs 35... Against the Pels. Yeah, that's not horrible. I'd be fine with uh, a three there. Justice Winslow, 3,700 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. You know, doesn't exactly fill up the stat sheet. Um, GPP Flyer, sure. But I couldn't go any further than that. Most people wouldn't either. Tyler Johnson... There's so much variability there. Just a GPP guy. Just a four. I don't have any interest in Wayne at all. 3,700. Roll is dramatically reduced now. Um, Whiteside. 7,500 on FanDuel. 7,100 on DK. You know, you're looking for 38 or so. Uh, has been really steady. 36, 36, 37, 31, 38. Um... You know, he's a guy that's been in and out this year. Uh, had some, you know, not just not the healthiest season. This could be a spot where that week was really important for him. I'm going to say that uh, Whiteside is, he's still just a four. Um, but I like him in a GPP scenario. Then we've got James Johnson, 5,100, needs 25. Um, he's been... Playing a little bit better as of late, but he's just going to be a four. We'll go to the Nuggets now. This one's going to be weird. Um, nuggets, 106.5 implied total. Three and a half point favorites at home against the Spurs. They have the 12th highest implied total. Not a great matchup. Um, one thing to keep in mind, Will Barton... I'm already forgetting what it is. Yeah, so Will Barton apparently has strep throat that he's likely to play, but that's something to keep in mind. Um, I can't imagine wanting to go play a basketball game, particularly against the Spurs uh, with strep throat. So, I don't know. That's just one thing to pay attention to for tonight. Um, Gary Harris is 6,000 on FanDuel and 6,100 on DK. You're looking for 30. Uh, he had three games above 30 in the past two weeks. If Gary, or if, if Will Barton happens to be out, uh, that makes Gary Harris look very good. I'm ignoring Will Barton. Um, I don't. I can't see a reason why I would want to force 
a guy with strep throat against the Spurs. Jamal Murray, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, he's all over the map, whether it's 7 or 13 or 46 or 43. To me, that's just the GPP guy. Decent spot for him, um, but still just a 4. Yeah, If Barton's out, again, that's going to make a shift to uh, some of these guys. No interest in Wilson Chandler at 6,000, which is fucking ludicrous. What his salary's up like two grand off of you know two games. Yeah. <laughs> Why is he so expensive? That's so silly. He's thirty eight hundred a couple of games ago. So silly. Nikola Jokic. 9,700 on FanDuel, 10,300 on DK. Okay, you can't play Jokic on DraftKings. Um, but I think he's more than acceptable on FanDuel. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a three. And then Mason Plumley expected to be back. Um, 4,600 and 4,300. I don't have, like, a ton of interest in it. But he'd been playing okay right before he went out. I'll just say that he's a four. We'll go to... The Kawhi Leonardless San Antonio Spurs. Kawhi cleared to play by doctors. Not on the floor. There's very weird shit going on in San Antonio. No one will know it because it's San Antonio. Sorry, anybody from San Antonio. Um, Aldridge should have gotten a, a nice bit of rest over these past over this past week and a half um, 8700 on FanDuel 7700 on DK so you're looking for 43 I think this is a an okay spot for Aldridge you say that that's a 3 uh, Danny Green is 4400 on FanDuel 4700 on DK um, it's 22. I'd be okay with Danny Green in a GPP. That's a four for me. And that's just Fandle. I, there's no, I don't see the need in DK. Not really interested in Kyle Anderson or Murray. Or Bertans. I guess Powell, 5,700 and 5,800. That's not the worst in the world. Coming off of some rest. I'll say he's a four, but I don't ever really want a lot of Spurs. Go to Phoenix. Three games left now. Suns, 110 implied total is seventh. Uh, they are four and a half point underdogs at home against the Clippers. No Tyson Chandler. Uh, neck injury. He's doubtful right now, but wouldn't expect him to play. Not a horrible matchup for the uh, Suns, so let's check and see what we get here. Devin Booker, 7,700 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. So you're looking for 40. Um, that looks more than okay to me. Had 36 in his one game with Alfred Payton. So I'm going to say Devin Booker is a 3. Alfred Payton is 7,500 on FanDuel. He is uh, actually Devin Booker's a four on uh, DraftKings. DraftKings peeps, good luck tonight. Somebody's gonna make themselves look like a genius. <laughs> Alfred Payton, seventy-seven or seventy-five hundred on FanDuel, seventy-nine hundred on DK. Yeah, he needs like thirty-eight. I love it. He's been good. Uh, I'm gonna say that he's a three on FanDuel. God, my nose is. Itchy, such dry air. Four on DK. Bender, 3,800 on... What is going on? God damn it. 3,800 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. Oh, I hate Bender, but if Chandler's not going to be in at 3,800, like, you can still get... I mean, he's a GPP play. You can get 45 or you can get fucking 7. So, 
I'm okay with having a little bit of Ender tonight, but I wouldn't go uh, I wouldn't go too crazy. Josh Jackson, 5,900 on both sites, needs 30. Again, just the these are all GPP GPP type things. I'm gonna say he's a three, and then TJ Warren, six thousand on both sites. Hasn't been playing exceptional. Needs thirty, which he did do four times in the past two weeks, but only once with Peyton. And I'll say Warren's a four. But the guy that we really need to look at, I think, is Alex Len. Uh, definitely no Chandler. Obviously, uh, Greg Monroe not on the team anymore. $4,500 price tag for Alex Len. If he gets anything close to minutes, he played 38 right before the break. Um, I've got him in for 27 right now. And at 27, uh, he should smash value. Uh, so I think that Alex Len is a two on FanDuel. And you know what, he's probably just a straight two. Um, barring any news to the contrary, uh, you should probably have a large amount of, well, not a large amount of Alex Len because of, you know, who he is, but um, he's the best value I've seen on the board so far. And I don't have any interest in Marquise Chris. Seems to be his minutes are down. Clippers. Uh, obviously the best matchup on the board against the Suns. 114.5 implied total is second. Game should be relatively close, or at least it is on paper. Um, as of right now, we have Avery Bradley in uh, per doc. He's got like a groin or whatever the fuck. Um, he's going to be like 50-50 for every game moving forward. So Tobias Harris is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. I think that looks pretty tasty. I'm going to say that he's a 3 Gallinari, um, also a three for me. Just be cognizant that this is a back-to-back -back for the Clippers, and Gallo is one of the more fragile guys in the league. Austin Rivers, also a three. I'm just going to like a, a lot of the Clippers. It's basically the easiest way to say it. This one's going to be the most interesting piece of it all. DeAndre Jordan is 8,000 on FanDuel. He's 8,300 on DK. I mean, not that I think that Alex Len is going to slow DeAndre Jordan down, but every single second that Alex Len is not on the floor and DeAndre is, he is going to eviscerate Dragon Bender. Bender is so soft, and Jordan should have free reign on him. I, I expect a monster out of DeAndre Jordan, unless they go with a ton of Len as a bigger, stronger body. Um, for me, DeAndre Jordan is a two on FanDuel. I love him. Uh, it's such a great matchup. I'll say that he's a three on DK just because of the price. But it's hard to like that much more than I do right now. Uh, Lou Will, 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, he's a three for me on FanDuel, borderline two. You know, he's just a three, a straight three. He's a borderline two for me on FanDuel. Um, but the Clippers are the best spot for a reason. Lou Will gets to the line a lot. Uh, Phoenix going to put a ton of people there. So I think the Clippers are going to be one of my main focuses tonight. Not that I'm um, telling anybody anything they don't already know. Utah Jazz, 105.25 uh, implied total is 14th, they are hosting the Portland Trailblazers, and they are four-point favorites. Uh, Rubio expected to be back, so I'm anxious to see how the Royce O'Neal minutes shake out with Rubio back. Um, they haven't been at full strength yet after the trade deadline. Rubio's been out since all of those games, and then they didn't have Crowder for one of them, so rotations are something to pay attention to here. For some guys, it doesn't matter, like Donovan Mitchell in particular. 7,700 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. Again, shit price on DraftKings, um, but Mitchell looks pretty good. Needs right around 40. Um, the last four games have been 
solid. I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on uh, DK. Gobert, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. So he also needs right around 40. Um, I don't. I think he's a really safe play for cash. I'm not super married to the idea of him for a ton of GPP lineups. Uh, Ingles up to 6,500 is, is probably a bit too pricey. Was on a tear uh, before the break. 36 in uh, five of six games, uh, including one at 40 points, but... That's just too much for him. He's not a different player. Rubio's at 7,400, coming back off of the injury. Uh, seems like a bit of a force. He's 6,400 on DraftKings, though. So I'm going to say that he's a four, but I can't imagine having much of any Rubio. Favors at 6,100, 5,700 on DK. So you'd be looking for 30. Um, he's been playing really well. Last three games before the break. 36, 39, and 37. All of those would have been um, 6x or higher. Hard to not want to move forward with that here. Uh, price still looks good. I have no complaints. Uh, favors is a 3 for me. We go to Portland. Uh, Blazers. 101.25 implied total. Dead last on the slate. Which is so crazy to think about for a team that is built around Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum and Nurkic, three guys that are like offensive centers or offensive players. So crazy. That's how much the Jazz can bring teams down to their level. Uh, CJ is 7,000 on FanDuel and 6,500 on, uh, on DK. It's really not a bad price. He needs 35. Um, it's just a really bad matchup. I'm going to say CJ's a four. Dame is 9,100 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. He's been on a bit of a heater lately. Uh, he needs 45 for value. Two of his last three games have been above 60. So I definitely have a an inkling to have some Dame and GPPs. I, I just can't. It's like I have little dudes tickling my face with tiny feathers or something stupid. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> Al Farouk Aminu is 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. I don't generally like taking him unless he's below 4,500 because he only does one thing. I'm going to say he's a 4. Harkless's minimum salary on FanDuel... 3700 on DK. Um, seems like a force to me. And then Nurkic is 7000 on FanDuel. 5800 on DK. Going up against Gobert. Needs 35 on FanDuel. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't like anything here. Let's go to the last game. Lakers hosting the Mavs. 113.75 implied total for the Lakers. They are three and a half point favorites at home, and uh, the Mavs are uh, in the news right now for being super creeps. So, see how they respond to that. Uh, Lonzo expected to be back, which is exciting. Uh, anxious to see how they integrate Lonzo and Isaiah. Uh, it's a real weird team right now with Isaiah Thomas and. Brooke Lopez, but then just a bunch of young dudes. I don't know. Brandon Ingram, uh, you have to assume, is going to be going back to his role of not handling the ball as much. Uh, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, yeah, with Lonzo coming, I, I don't know how to really make... I don't like Ingram tonight, but I don't really know how to make heads or tails of this Lakers team with all these new people, or with Isaiah on it now. It's a real dramatic change. Isaiah is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. That's 32. That's a great price on DraftKings. But I, I have to say that he's just a 4. I don't know how to manage him. I don't know what to think. 
He's been so, so, so bad this year. Julius Randle, 7,300 on both sites. That's 36. No reason to hate that, I guess. He's just uh, probably a four. Dallas is sneaky okay on D. Although, we have Mark Cuban coming out saying he's going to tank. Let's call Randall a three. Uh, KCP is not interesting to me. Lonzo at 6,500. It's 32 against Dallas. Um, I don't mind a flyer on Lonzo. That's about as far as I could go with it. Um, no interest in Kuzma. And I think Brooke Lopez is going to see a couple less minutes now. Um, but, you know, he's efficient. I'm happy to go four. And then finally we go to Dallas. The Mavs 110.25 implied total is sixth. And uh, they are three and a half point underdogs on the road. Wes Matthews. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. So you're looking for 27. I mean, he can get there. Just a four, though. This is just a weird, weird night. Barnes, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Needs 34. I kind of like Harrison Barnes tonight. Dennis Smith Jr., 7,000, so he needs 35. Multiple games right there, 35, 34, 37. Um, no issues there, especially if he gets 30 minutes of Isaiah. He should uh, do whatever he wants. The level of athleticism right now is ridiculous, compared, comparatively speaking. Berea is 6,000, 5,400 on DK. Without Devin Harris there. Yeah, Brea went for 43 in his last one. I'll say Brea is a three. That's not bad. And then Dirk is just a four. That's all I would want in this game. And that is it. I, I saw very little of interest here. I don't even know what this is going to look like. It's without any late news that really opens something up. I think lineups are going to be all over the place. Let's run a hundred and check it out. Add some rando. What do we get? All right. I mean, an overwhelming amount of suns, which doesn't surprise me. Tons of Len. So if you went Len, you know, I did like Jimmy Butler. I wish that I can go DeAndre and Lynn. I guess that's the perks of uh, playing 150 lines. No DeAndre in the first 100, though. Um, but now, if you if you filter down by Lynn, I think grabbing Jimmy Butler, um, grabbing some Lou Will, some Bender. You know, you can get into a lineup. <sighs> All of these are ending up with Peyton. There's just so much Suns. It's going to be hard to filter that out. I like anything with Josh Richardson, though, as a sneak tip lineup. Yeah, I don't know. Breaking this down is tough. Let's see what we can do on DK. DK. 
this is going to be even weirder because there's so, like we're not. I don't expect to see very many uh, high-priced guys here. This is going to look, I would imagine, very balanced. There's just not enough value to open up some of these guys on DK right now outside of Len probably. What in the f oh, that makes more sense. Wait, no, that doesn't make. Oh yeah, everybody's at zero percent. Whoops. I was like, Justin Patton, what is happening? Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, that looks right. Yeah, so tons of Len, tons of Andrew Harrison. So both of those things open up Drummond as my optimal, which is very interesting. So you'd be looking at Harrison and Len. Um, and then just a mass of weird shit. So let's say we wanted to look at Clippers, Pacers, Mavs, and Grizzlies. None of those teams are showing up in this big list. Barely any Gasol. You know, maybe Wes Matthews there. Something like this. Where would we want to look? All these are ending up with like one guy that you just probably shouldn't have. I don't mind this. Bledsoe, Harrison, Butler, Porter, Gobert, Berea, Matthews, Len is at least slightly entertaining. But I don't know. We're going to need some news. So I will be live tonight starting at 6 o'clock on both YouTube and Twitch. Um, I updated my Streamlabs OBS software last night right before going live, and it deleted my scenes that I had set up, which was not great because I did not have them saved from uh, previously. So uh, I had to go and have no Twitch stream, but we will be on both tonight. You guys follow me on Twitter, check out Reddit, uh, like and subscribe to the video or this channel. And, um, yeah, let's hope for the best tonight. Going 150 lines again in FanDuel. So, um, fingers crossed, everybody. I'll see you tonight. Bye.